Hello, it's Mr. Thompson, and this is another video math lesson. This lesson we'll be talking about what's called gradient intercept form. We've been talking about lines and graphing lines and uh, the relations that lines represent, and gradient intercept form goes along with that theme. And um, gradient intercept form is a way of formatting the equations or rules that um, that describe lines and relations. Um, so, gradient intercept form looks like this. It's y equals mx plus b. Now, each of the letters in this equation, in this form, uh, has a certain purpose. As usual, the y and the x are the pronumerals. They represent the numbers that are the coordinate pairs of the relation. Um, the m is the gradient. Okay, The letter m is that, that number, it'll be a number, and it'll be right in front of the x when it's in gradient intercept form. That represents the gradient of the line that this equation uh, represents. The b on the end is the y-intercept. So you can see why this is called gradient intercept form. It's really simple and it just comes down to the pronumerals, the gradient, and the y-intercept. <clears throat> so we'll look at, to look at how this works, we'll look at an example. And it's really quite simple. Our example we'll start with is the equation y equals two thirds x plus one. Um, so we want to find out. We want to kind of determine what the gradient is. And as um, mentioned, this the letter this m represented the gradient in y-intercept form. It's the number that's right in front of the x. So um, for this one, our gradient is two thirds. It's that number in front of the x. And then we want to figure out the y-intercept. And it's just as easy. It's that number on the end where the b was, right? In this case, it is this number here, the number 1. All right, so our y-intercept is 1. So now we can use this information to very easily graph this relation. We do that first by uh, plotting the y-intercept. So we go on the y-axis to the point 1 on the y-axis, and we plot that point. Okay? Now we use the gradient to figure out where the next point will be, to find another point. Now, the gradient, we know, is rise over run, right? And this gradient is conveniently in a fraction form, so the rise will be 2, and the run will be 3. So we go up 2 and over 3, and we plot a point there. Okay, we just use that uh, gradient, just like it's meant to be used, to go up 2, over 3, and we plot a point. And now we have two points, and two points determine a line, so we can just draw a line straight through those two points, and we're done. Easy as that. <clears throat> now, it can get a little bit more tricky, so let's look at a couple more examples. <clears throat> the next example we'll look at will be y equals 3x minus 2. Okay, So we'll figure out the gradient, Okay, and as always, the gradient is that number in front of the x, so in this case it's 3. And the y-intercept is the number uh, at the end, right? But in this case, remember our um, our gradient intercept form um, looks like this, y equals mx plus b. Okay, so we notice a difference here. This isn't, it is gradient intercept form, but there's a slight difference. Usually there's a plus, here there's a minus, so we need to take into account and figure out what that means. Now, one thing we can do is turn this minus into a plus, because we know that whenever we're subtracting, it's the same as adding a negative, right? And now it looks exactly like uh, the gradient intercept form. Okay, it has that plus, and our y-intercept is clearly negative 2. Okay? Now you don't always have to change it into adding a negative. You can just remember that when there's a minus there, it's, uh, that, that y-intercept is going to be negative. Okay? So let's go ahead and graph this, and the first thing we do is plot that negative 2 on the... Um, on the y-intercept, so we go down to negative 2 on the y-axis and plot that point. Now we're going to use the gradient to find the next point, and we, just like before, we use it as rise over run, but in this case, the 3 is not in a fraction, so what's the rise and what's the run? Well, the number 3, as all numbers, can be, um, the number 3 can be written into a fraction form by making it 3 over 1. And now we see that it's a rise of 3 and a run of 1. So we go from our point down here and we go up 3 and over 1, and we plot a point there. We have our two points, so we use our straight edge and draw a line between those two points, and we're done. One more example. Um, <clears throat> this time we'll do y equals x plus 4. Now, 
when we go to do this and we find the gradient and we look and we say, well, there's no number in front of the x, right? And uh, this is just something you need to remember. If there's no number in front of the x, then the number in front is 1. Multiplying by 1 doesn't change anything. You can always stick a 1 in front of any um, pronumeral or multiply any number by 1. It doesn't change anything. And if you think about it, how many x's did we have there? We had 1. Up here we've got 3 x's. Down here we have 1 x. So that's our gradient. Our gradient is 1 which, of course, as a fraction, is 1 over 1. So it's a rise of 1 and a run of 1. So nice and easy. Okay, our y-intercept is very simple. It's just 4. Okay, that number at the end of the equation there. So we go up, plot the point 4 on the, uh, on the y-axis here. We go up 1 and over 1 and plot another point. And there we go. Using a straight edge, we draw a line, and we're good to go. That's it for now. We'll have another video with, that talks about how to um, put equations into gradient-intercept form. So we'll see you then.